I was asked to speak about drug and substance abuse. Eh? All right. I hope that you're ready to write notes. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm ready to learn. And I have all the gadgets. Mwoneshe gadgets zako, mwoneshe kalamu, mwoneshe pen, and nini, daftari, mwambie niko. When you look at scripture, the only drug that seems to have been mentioned in scripture is alcohol. So I want to talk, I want to begin, I'm going to begin with alcohol, but I'm going to end talk, I'm, I'm going to end up talking about the other drugs as well. Amen? All right, so be prepared. So those who, are, who have my presentation, I know the media team has my presentation, just hold on to it. I'll let you know when we are going to roll. Okay? So I want to begin by talking about alcohol, and we are going to first go to scripture. And um, before we even get to scripture, let me give you, write down the word alcohol, and then write down word study. Word study. We want to study that word, alcohol, to see where it came from. I want you to know that nothing is coincidental. Nothing happens by accident, okay? Every word that is used to describe anything usually carries both the spiritual and the physical meaning. It's just that we don't know that it does because we don't know where the word came from, okay? So in etymology or the study of language, when we study language, we understand that there is no language in the world that has a word for everything. Okay? So as people interact and bring new ideas, they also bring their language and the names of those things into this new language. So for instance, what is, a, what is a car called in Kiswahili? Gari. Okay? But there's also another, another, <laughs> another name. Motoka. Now, both are correct, isn't it? Yes, both are correct. And that's because motoka was borrowed from what? English. So let's, let's do a word study for the word alcohol. The word alcohol... It comes from the Arabic language. It's an Arabic word that came into English. It, has, it is a compound word, which means it has two words combined. That's two words combined. Um, one is al. You know, like al-shabab. al Qaeda, al, al Al something. That word al usually means belonging to. In Arabic. It means belonging to. It's like saying wa in Kikuyu. Sawa sawa. When you say wa, wa gidomo, wa means belonging to. Okay? So that's the word al. So you've already understood the first part of that word, al, means belonging to. Now you need to understand who this thing belongs to. Where the English word uses kohol, the Arabic word is kuhul. K-U-H-U-L. The U there. K-U-H-U-L. Kuhul or kuhul. You can actually omit the U after the H because the Arabic H is very strong. It carries a vowel. So for Arabs, the H is not it is huh. That's why when they are talking you know, you understand that? So this is kuhul. Okay? Kuhul means 
a spirit that eats the body. Okay? A spirit that does what? Eats the body. So the word alcohol means this drink belongs to the spirit that eats the body. When you take this drink, your body will be eaten and destroyed. Now, to memorize our study. Now you are not too. So alcohol means body eating spirit. The drink that belongs to a body eating spirit. So alcohol is spiritual. But it has the physical component that you take it. When you consume it, what enters you is not just liquid. What enters you is spiritual. I'm going to show you from scripture. All right? Atua Media, give me Proverbs 20 verse 1. Let's give me Proverbs 20 verse 1. I was I just switched to Swahili, so it's okay. Please let's read it together. Okay. All right. So let's, let's now begin to discover what we call the economy of alcohol. That is, when you take alcohol, what do you bring to yourself? And this is going to be purely from scripture. You bring on to yourself a spirit that mocks. To mock is to darau, despise what is good, and also despise authority. So the first economy of alcohol is a spirit of mockery. Dwendele? Ah, yeah. uh, just put that scripture there. Don't, don't move from it. Don't move from it. The second economy, it says strong drink is a brawler. That word there means one who is angry and wants to fight all the time. A brawl is a fight that comes from a spirit of rage. Kuna watu wa nahasira, nahasira ya saazote, ambazo hawezi kudhibiti. Hawezi kudhibiti hasira. So, brawler is that alcohol puts into you if you don't already have anger issues, alcohol puts into you a spirit of brawling. I'm sure you've heard of bar fights. Wale watu wanalewa kwenye bar wananza kuchapana mangumi. Umesikia hao? Na wanachapana na chupa za za nini? Una mtu ananiniwa kwa kichwa. And so many people who have been drinking for a long time carry scars, physical scars that comes from brawling. Melewana, that is the second economy of alcohol. The third economy of alcohol is leading astray. This is a spirit of deception. Spirit of deception. That wine will lead you astray. So a person that drinks also brings upon themselves a spirit of deception. They are deceived in themselves. 
Alright? And then the fourth economy, it's also in that verse, is the lack of wisdom, which is called foolishness. So a spirit of foolishness comes upon you. That's why you find, you, have you ever heard people say, who you akinyu apombe atwezi muangelesha? Have you heard that? When this person is drunk, he is a totally different person. He doesn't reason. Anaongea mbaya. Anatukana kila mtu. Anajikojolea. What is that called? Spirit of foolishness. Tuendele na hii economy. Tuendele. Aya. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Tell, tell someone I am getting blessed. All right. Someone, give me, media team, please give me Habakkuk 2, verse 5. Habakkuk 2, verse 5. Okay. Okay. Are we ready for more economy? Are we going to number five now? We are now going to economy number five. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine. <laughs> so what spirit is that? A spirit of sin. A spirit of sin. Yoni number five. Atujengia kitabu yote ya science. Tukotu wapa, sindio? Tuendele tu wapa. Aya. That is why you find people who drink alcohol love sinning. And they will sin and keep sinning. The next one, number six. He is a proud man. <laughs> what is that spirit called? Spirit of pride. Huyu mbwana ni mwenye kiburi, anakejeli kila mtu, na anatharau. Anaangalia watu hivyo, ambia wewe ni nani, unaniongeleja, haje wewe kuenda, wewe usiniongeleja, chana mimi. Have you met guys like that? Almost every drunkard, when they have taken this thing, that spirit of pride is what you meet. Huh? That is number six, Okay. Number seven, and he does not stay at home. And he does not stay at home. He does not stay at home. You know, we, we like to make jokes about drunkards. Unasema, gari inajua nyumbani. Mesikeyo mambo. Kwa sababu yule buwana vile yeo ufika nyumbani ni neema ya mungu peke yake. Indeed, God is merciful. And I think the people that receive God mercy the most are drunkards. By the time a drunkard is dead because he was driving, God has really protected him from many accidents and near accident situation. Yeye yeah, anastaga kichwa chake kinaona mbili mbili tatu tatu lakini gari inaenda tu straight. Na gari inafika nyumbani. Na wanaiegesha kwa maegesho. And that car. <laughs> that's the mercy of God. But here is the point. He does not. Number eight. Because he enlarges his desire as hell. So we have what you call an uncontrollable and insatiable appetite. A spirit of lust for alcohol. This is where now it, beca it becomes something that scientists call alcoholism. You understand that? That is where it crosses into. He enlarges his desires as hell and he is like death. He cannot be satisfied. This fellow cannot be satisfied. So he will drink and then go back and drink. And then after that he will drink again. 
and then he'll keep drinking. Let me also say, the spirit of hell is what you call a spirit of damnation. So that's number nine. Is that number nine now? Okay. So alcohol is a spirit of destruction. And then number 10 is that alcohol carries a spirit of death. There are many people who have died because of alcohol. Number 11, we are still talking about the economy of alcohol. It says he gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. There's mass deception when it comes to alcohol. There are many people in this bondage and they justify it. Uh, people tell me, oh, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. Even Paul told Timothy, a little wine is good for your stomach. So drinking is not bad. It's only when you get drunk that that's bad. These are worldly arguments based on this. Gathering to himself all nations and heaping up for himself all peoples. Satan wants as many people drinking alcohol as possible because of the economy. Now there's a classic passage. I want you to go to Proverbs 23 from verse 29. Proverbs 23 from verse 29. Okay. We're going to look at what you call the six curses. Now I've moved away from the economy. Well, I'm still, partly I'm still in the economy. So let's just say this is the next economy. So that's number what? 12 or 11? Number 12. Please say, write there 12, the curses of alcohol. It's part of the economy. The curses of alcohol. These are the six curses of alcohol in this verse. Number one is war. War is, other people call it bad luck. <laughs> other people call it jinx. It's a spirit of misfortune. That's the first curse of alcohol. Bad things follow people who drink alcohol. Second curse is sorrow. Sorrow is sadness. This is where depression comes from. Sorrow. Number three, contentions. These are fights and mainly localized within relationships, beginning with home. Marriages are rocked by contentions because of this. Families, children are rocked with contention because of alcohol. The fourth curse is complaints. Alcohol begins to destroy your body and you start complaining. This goes wrong, that goes wrong, this goes wrong. Curse number five, wounds without cause. Because of brawling and fighting, because of falling into mitaros, because of accidents, because of all kinds of things. People who drink alcohol, carry wounds. Then number six, curse number six, who has redness of eyes. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what the eyes, what redness of eyes means. Because so that you don't think it's just a biological phenomenon. I mean, I have red eyes, so... I've, I've never been drunk in my life. So the alcoholic redness of eyes stands for your eyes begin to see things, but your eyes also become what you call eyes of rage. Have you seen a person who is, has taken alcohol? Machake ni makali sana, sindio? Angi kuangalia na kuangalia kwa ukali ni kama umemkosea. 
That's what we mean by redness of eyes. It is not necessarily on the physical. It is a spiritual phenomenon. Then they easily also become candidates for optical problems. They have medical optical problems because of drinking. Um, of course, there is rage and fury. And there is spirits of bloodshed coming through those eyes. The only time my mother would beat my father, sorry, my father would beat my mother, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just checking whether you're awake. You're awake, eh? Yeah, my father had only six wives. Uh, my mother was number five. And they, they used to disagree a lot. And my father never touched my mother except when he was drunk. And when he would come, we would look at him and his eyes would tell us his rage there and there's going to be a war in the house. That thing, that thing broke us as children. This is how alcohol destroys people. Uh, I'm still on that passage. Please don't take it away. That passage is very important. I right, turn it to the next verse. Go to the next verse. Those who linger long at wine. Who linger long at wine. This is what you call the curse of addiction. Also go in search of mixed wine. Go to the next. Now we begin to be given what? The, the writer of Proverbs begins to give us what you call God, godly instruction with regard to alcohol. So I'm going to be coming back to that. I'll come back to that. So suspend that for now. You can take it out. Because that is going to be how we remedy. I want now to go to the next one. Please go to Habakkuk 2 verse 15. Habakkuk 2 verse 15. This is the next curse. It's a curse of causing your neighbor to drink. It says, woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor. And your neighbor is basically your friend. Those, like 90% who started, of people who started drinking, drank because somebody persuaded them. Somebody who was close to them persuaded them. This is Habakkuk 2.15. It's a curse. Pressing him to your bottle, even to make him drunk. So the curse of making your neighbor to drink, and then there is also now the next curse, which is what you call the curse of nakedness. The curse of nakedness is the shame of alcohol. When people drink, they do shameful things. Lala Komitaro. Kukujikojolea, kusema mambo ya aibu ya mambo kubwa kubwa ya aibu. Those who have learned to live with alcoholics have lived most of their lives covering their nakedness. Kweli ama wongo? Kweli. Those are wounds in our hearts that we need to deal with. Let's go to verse 16. Habakkuk 2.16. You are filled with shame instead of glory. So that's still in the same curse. You also drink and be exposed as uncircumcised. This has nothing to do with the condition of your sexual organ. This has everything to do with the condition of your heart. The next curse of those who drink is the curse of being ungodly. 
curse of being ungodly. You also drink and be exposed as what? Uncircumcised. The next curse of those who drink alcohol is a curse of God's judgment. Curse of God's judgment. It says the cup of the Lord's right hand will be turned against you. And the utter shame will be on your glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, well, let me just emphasize. Go to Isaiah 5.11. This just emphasizes. It emphasizes addiction. Uh, we already looked at addiction or slavery. Uh, it's Isaiah 5.11, not Isaiah 5.1. 5.11. Look at that. It says, Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink who continue until night till wine inflames them. And even though this also intoxicate, I mean, uh, looks at addiction, it reinforces addiction. Let me introduce another curse. It's what you call the curse of sickness. The inflaming there refers to sickness. It's a curse of sickness. Mia Jiraniako Pombe na Manino Mengi. The next one is Hosea 4.11. Hosea 4 verse 11. All right. Let's go back to the economy now. <laughs> We were at economy 12. Those were the curses, eh? Was that? What was the curses? It was number 12, eh? So now we go to number 13. The 13th economy of alcohol is halotry, sexual immorality. It says halotry Wine and new wine enslave the heart. Sexual morality. There's a version that adds something onto it. It says, Halotry and wine and new wine take away the heart and the mind and spiritual understanding. So the heart there is, is very important. To enslave the heart is to take away your understanding, your spiritual understanding. So you will never do anything with understanding. You will never be reasonable. You will not understand spiritual things. Yet at the same time, people who drink alcohol present you with arguments that sound very logical, isn't it? Yes. And that's what it is. It is a lack of spiritual understanding. Let's go to Isaiah 28, verse 7. This is where it becomes, sorry, sorry, what was that? Was that verse 11? Go back. Just go back to what you had projected. It 
It's for 11. You had given us a new version. I like that version. The one you just put at last before you move it out. Okay? Yes, that version. It's an amplified version. Please take note of that. Prostitution wine and new wine take away the mind and the spiritual understanding. Okay? Okay, um, let's go now to Isaiah 28, verse 7. That's the next economy of alcohol. This is when alcohol comes into the lives of men and women of God who are called to lead the people of God. It's when it comes into the lives of archbishops, apostles, prophets, pastors, priests, bishops, This, this economy is terrible. But they also have erred through wine. This is the second time you are meeting that statement, isn't it? To err through, through wine. And through intoxicating drink. And are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through drink. I think this is beginning to give way. <laughs> this microphone is beginning to give way, so... I'm giving early notice. Right? Um, the priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine. This economy is the economy of causing servants of God to fall. Alcohol causes servants of God to fall. They are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way. Swallowed up means they are completely wamewezwa. Najua kitu kama imekuweza, eh? Yeah, imeweza. Um, swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way. That means they can no longer walk the way and they can no longer show the way. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. The air in vision. When a man or woman of God can no longer see what God is showing them, then they lose spiritual authority. And what alcohol does in the life of a man or woman of God is to block their spiritual vision. They can no longer see or receive from God. Air in vision. And then they stumble in judgment. That means they also make the wrong decisions. When they are trying to help people, they make the wrong decisions. They render the wrong judgments. They also make bad choices in life. Anytime you hear a servant of God fell, look for alcohol. <laughs> Hello? Yes, please look for alcohol. And remember this verse, Isaiah 28 verse 7. Alright, so now let's start rebuilding. How do we deal with alcohol? How do we deal with alcohol? Tell your neighbor, this is getting interesting. <laughs> Alright, so how do we deal with alcohol? Joel 1 verse 5. Joel chapter 1 verse 5. Joel chapter 1 verse 5. Okay? It says what? Awake, you drunkards, and weep and wail, all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine it has been cut off from your mouth. We have to pray for a spiritual awakening and repentance of those who drink. Only that saves people who drink from, this, from all these curses and woes. 
to start, that's where it begins. But the Lord cuts this thing from the mouth and from the appetite. And it dries up the patterns and changes the way that they do business. Right, now let's go back to Proverbs 23, where we stopped. And we'll start off at verse 31. Proverbs 23 and verse 31. That would be number two. Number two is, do not look at, on wine. Don't look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. Do you see these advertisements? Hey, they... You see, there's a Guinness, Michael Power. They've even created a character. A man with a fit body, you know, so fit. Looks so good. Guinness is a powerful drink. Malt, lager. In, eh? they say it is delicious, powerful. at your neighbor and say, do not look. Do not gaze. Do not ponder. Do not consider. That means do not buy the argument. They show you the way the glass, even the glass itself was in the fridge, isn't it? It has those spots of water. Then when the, when the drink is poured, they even capture the sound. You hear? That is very deliberately targeted at your desires that come through your eyes and your ears. Do not gaze on wine. Do not ponder. Do not consider the argument. Do not consider the proposal. There is no value in that proposal. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 32. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Remember that. Remember, and this is the third point. Remember, alcohol destroys in the end, right? Eventually, the results of alcohol are not now. It is eventually. That's why it says here, at the last, there's a version that says, in the end, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. In fact, for some people, alcohol is what brings their end. Remember that warning. That alcohol bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. When a viper stings you, it paralyzes you because the poison goes into your nerves and all kinds of things and shuts you down in minutes. That's what alcohol will do. Right? Verse 33. Ah... Your eyes will see strange sights. And your mind will imagine confusing things. Refuse to enjoy the feeling of being drunk. There are people who go to drink alcohol because they love the ire the ire feeling. Have you ever heard of the word ire? Eh? Wasamtani mkwapa. Eh? Zaya kivuta vampiro ama what do you call it now? What is banki called? Vampiro. Eh? Yeah? Yeah, that one. <laughs> the gym where I go to work out. 
I've got some Mata fellows who are very good friends of mine. And sometimes I provoke a conversation. So one day I provoked a conversation about Bangi. And I remember one of the, one of the fellows there, he told me, Haki Bangi ni kitu jinga sana. So I asked him why. He said, what do you say? Ukivuta yu kitu, inaanza tu kukuonesha vitu ambazo waziko. Samin likuwa nimeka kwa hao. Eh? Nimeka kwa hao. Nika chukua yangu moja, nika hivuta tu vizuri. Sasa hao mini likuwa nani hao. Nikisha vuta, nika unatu madirisha. So mini enda kutoka kwa dirisha, nika gunga kichu, kapa. <laughs> same thing happens to alcohol. Tell your neighbor, your eyes will see strange sights. <laughs> your eyes will see strange sights. Your mind will imagine confusing things. The ground lifts. I'm told the reason that people stagger when they have taken alcohol is this ground, you know, there's this thing called balance in our body. Eh? Balance is, God is an amazing God. He created us to balance on two feet. Did you, know, did you know that your upper body is heavier than your lower body? You know that. That's why children, when they're learning to walk, they fall forward. Boom. They stand, they fall backward. Boom. Why do they do that? The head is the heaviest part of the body, even now. Yes, then here, <laughs> yet God has provided that your legs carry you. We we'll just give God a mighty clap. <laughs> now, then those, those who take alcohol, those who take alcohol, see, sakafu ni hii, sindio? Sakafu ni hii. Mtu wakisha kunyo pombe, sakafu inaanza kupanda nini? Inaanza kupanda ngazi. Sasa yeye, Ile sakafu walikuwa, anaona ni kama yuko chini, anaanza kufanya nini? Kupanda. Alafu anaenda kup, kup, pu. Your eyes will see strange sights. Your mind will imagine strange things. Refuse that experience. Next one is Verse 34. What verse 34? You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on the top of the rigging. So you need to refuse. You need to refuse that feeling. One of the biggest and the strongest addictive factors of alcohol is the feeling it produces. The effect. Renounce the feeling. Renounce what you call, this is what you call false comfort. The other one is drunkenness. Your eyes will see strange sights. Bad judgment that comes from drunkenness. This particular one is called false comforts. Alcohol gives false comforts. Re renounce the spirit of false comforts. There are many people who are hurting and the way that they deal with their pain is what? Alcohol. It gives them some measure of comfort, but it's a false comfort. Renounce that. Verse 35. Next step to getting well. They hit me, you will say, but I am not hurt. <laughs> they beat me, but I don't feel it. Let me just stop there and give you the point. The point is, you need to turn away from alcohol at the first sign of danger. Turn away from alcohol at the first sight of danger. You see, this guy, this drunkard is saying, they hit me, but I am not hurt. When you say you're not hurt, you will go back to it. But those who drink alcohol, my advice to them is usually, I ask them, 
have you had any trouble because of alcohol? And they'll recount like 10, 15 problems they've had. I said, I open this verse and I say, you know, alcohol will, will tell you they hit me, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. So run away. Take off. Take off to the cross and repent. And then the next step back is it says here, when will I wake up so I can find another drink? Ask the Lord to break the spirit of addiction through the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Ask the Lord to break a spirit the spirit of alcoholic addiction through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So now in the, in the remaining minutes, I'll go to my presentation. It's going to be very fast. So media, if you have that presentation, would you please put there? Um, it's not in youth alone. It is in everyone. So go to the next page. Okay. Oh, sorry. You've gone to. All right. So this is just an understanding of your brain and how your brain functions when it comes to addiction. It says your brain controls everything, physical actions, emotions, response to life, memory, decisions, judgment, uh, sense, thoughts. Addictions are often caused by the brain's reward system. Okay. Go to the next. The rest are too small for us to read. Go to the next slide. It's the definition of substance abuse it refers to harmful or hazardous use of psychoactive substances. Harmful or hazardous use of psychoactive substances, including alcohol and illegal drugs. That is the World Health Organization definition. Okay. Let's go to the next. Substance abuse or drug abuse is used for wrong purpose, used in wrong quantities, continued use despite problems, use of illegal substances. The result is disruptive behavior in school, work, and relationships. Okay? So you see there the cycle of addiction or the, the, the process of addiction, taste, craving, Loss of control, compulsion, dependence. And of course, there is another thing they are called destruction. Okay? Let's go to the next. A disease, okay? So a disease that denies it is a disease. So addiction is a disease that denies it is a disease. Convinces users that they are okay because everybody around them looks okay. It starts voluntarily, continues despite harmful consequences. Right? Let's go to the next. Psychological craving. Psychological craving is a strong desire or urge to use drugs. Cravings are most apparent during drug withdrawal. Reasons for substance abuse are to feel good and to feel better. To feel good is to have feelings and sensations and experiences and to share them. And then to decrease anxiety, worry, fear, depression, hopelessness, and pain. Why do people initiate drug use? Much, if not most, drug use is motivated by the pursuit of pleasure. Pursuit of pleasure. Here you find a baby smoking shisha. This is called abuse through modeling. These parents have been smoking shisha. This is a church in Meru giving offerings of Mira. This will be a very difficult message for me to preach in Maua. Okay? Let's go to the next. That is cut social acceptance and also religious acceptance. Let's go back to that church. This is not just cultural influences. This is spiritual influence. Okay? And the next one, of course, is social acceptance. When you see your adults taking it freely, you also take it. Go to the next. Popular culture, music. Um, a lot of pop stars 
and entertainers, are abusers of drugs. And they have such fine bodies and they look so good. And when they smoke, like Bob Marley used to take the oliab, as they used to call it, oliab. You know, they call bangi holy hub, which is very twisted and very deceptive. So there's also the relationship between music and drugs. Okay, let's go to the next. There's advertisement. Advertisement always targets young people. Yeah, let's go to the next. How substances are taken in? There is the oral consumption, then there is the nasal consumption through the nose. There is intravenous consumption through needles that people use to inject. There is intramuscular through the muscles. There is sub, subcutaneously through the skin, subcutaneously. So you apply it on the skin. There is parectal through the anus. Kuna watu anatabiambaya sana. Wanaeka yo kwa reverse. And then typically applied as a cream. Or topically applied as a cream. Drugs of abuse in Kenya, alcohol, years, wine, spirits, tobacco, cigarettes, vaping. As vaping now is the in thing for young people. Mira, Mogoka, Bangi, Akawid, and many other names it has. Prescription medicines, others, cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and Guinata, and Acuna, methanol. Aya. Modes of substance usage, usage. You see there, those are modes. That's vaping, uh, that's smoking. The other one is anatomia, <laughs> anatomia spoon. Eh, kijiko. Uh, tendele. Those are modes. All those are modes. Let's go to the next. Ah, hii sasa ngoja kwanza. Tuanikale hizo cookies. Zinaitoga nini? Weed cookies. Eh? Wazee mtaadhari sana. Uneza pewa bisku tukalewa kabisa. <laughs> Your eyes will start seeing strange things. <laughs> Right? Even cakes. Aya. Tendele. That's how I want to eat shisha. Huka. The government has not declared shisha illegal. And that's a big problem we have. It needs to be declared illegal because it is about 10 times more addictive than a cigarette. And has very harmful effects. Okay, let's go to the next. That's intravenous. These are modes of substance administration. Let's go to the next. As I mtoto, mostly you find this in the slums. Uneza pata hui mtoto, hajakula siku mbili ya utatu. And the only way that the mother can deal with that hunger is to give them what? Alcohol. Hui mtoto hayuko kwa ba, yuko nyumbani. I hope you know that. Life in the slum can be so tough. Your children haven't eaten in three days. And you can't stand it. And I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that's why I put the picture there. For you to know that alcohol and drug abuse also follows what you call socioeconomic paths. Poverty is a big problem and exposes people to drugs and substance abuse. Right? Let's go to the next. Withdrawal symptoms, discomfort experience when a drug wears out. Ooh, examples anxiety, shakes, nausea, headaches, craving, in or something to a lock. Sindio? Hello? Yeah, okay. Michelle Kuskewa Levy or Kisema Lock. And you um depression, the restlessness, chills, sleep disturbances. Okay, let's go to the next. Addiction facts. Biology, genes, you know we, know, we now know that genetics contribute greatly to drug abuse and addiction when it overlaps with environmental influences, 
it makes addiction a complex disease. So there are people who come from a family of drunkards. If you do, you need proper deliverance. Praise the Lord. Yep. Kama watu wa kwenu ni walevi, tafadhali tafuta maombi na mtafute Yesu vizuri. Kwa sababu kuna milango imefunguka inaitwa doors of iniquity or gates of iniquity. Iniquity is the genetic <laughs> makeup of sin. Okay? So utapata kuna watu wengine katika jamii zao wana midomo. Ushapata na msoya ako na mdomo. Baba yake ana mdomo, yeye ana mdomo. Dada yake ana mdomo. Na mtoto wake pia ana nini? Ana mdomo. Shaptan. That's just mild. Kuna wengine ni asira. So that's called iniquity. Iniquity is the spiritual structure of sin that we are born with from our parents and grandparents. And it's something that we need to keep fighting against the rest of our lives. Okay, let's go to the next. Addiction facts. Science has generated much evidence showing that when a person first tries drugs, it is usually a voluntary um, decision. After repeated drug use, deciding to use drugs is no longer voluntary because prolonged drug use changes the brain in fundamental and long-lasting ways. This is what you call the rewiring of the brain thinking patterns so that you become what you call an alcoholic. Or a drug user whose brain has now been patterned to accommodate. And this is something that your system does for you. The first time you take whatever it is you take, let's use alcohol. Your system gets shocked. So you get drunk very fast. The second time you get it, you'll get drunk but not as fast as the first time. Something is happening to you and you have no idea. Your body is defending itself by changing its patterns to accommodate that substance. That's what that is. So the deliverance process must include asking God to rewire your brain. Let's go to the next. Effects of substance abuse, addiction, uh, medical, you know, uh, economic, health care, uh, health harm, productivity harm, accidents, social homelessness, crime, violence, Yep. So there they are. Okay. Can you imagine that drugs, cancer comes from drugs? Part of the cause of cancer is what? Drug abuse. Okay, let's go to the next. Ooh, stimulants. So these are the ones that stimulate you. You move quicker, faster, what? Right, these ones you just take a photo. <laughs> You'll go and read yourselves. A stimulants are the group of drugs that make you, you know, zina kuchangamsha, una changamka. Okay, let's go to the next. All right. There is mira in those. Changamsha zimbaka, you can't sleep. And you look at the effects. Let's go to the next. Your people have my presentation. So they can share it with you. Is that okay? Yes. The only one they don't have is what I shared in the beginning about alcohol. That one you'll get from the salmon. Okay. Um, effects of mira or cut. Um, constipation. Painful intercourse. Low average weight. Babies. Birth defects. Reduction of breast milk. You need to read these things with a tooth comb because... Yeah, the lie is very strong that some of these things are just like chewing uh, skuma. It's not the same. Okay, let's go to the next. There's also a problem with Mira because Mira 
produces what you call spermatorrhea. Spermatorrhea is when people ejaculate without intercourse. Sperm is not okay too, so what one answer cover diaper? Adult diaper. All right. What to the next? So look at tobacco. Sasa moja yule anayevuta sigara mapafu yake yamefanya nini? Yamekarangwa. Mapafu yake yamekarangwa, kukarangwa. How long do you expect somebody will live on those lungs? All right, go to the next. Aya, ndio hao. Avutaji sigara. That is the smile they give you. And then there is something we call tongue cancer. That's a very serious one right there. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, there's Bijas disease. Blood vessels get blocked and this starves the body and may lead to amputation. So, I'm going to get a cigarette and i Bijas disease. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next. Effects of depressants. They decrease the activity of the central nervous system. So we have now depressants. We have looked at stimulants. Then now these are depressants. Depressants slow you down. Okay. So, but they also cause pancreatitis. This is very gory. This is people trying to operate on a person with pancreatitis. All right, let's go to the next. Get out of that blood. <laughs> uh, so this is what alcohol does to your liver. It's a normal liver. That's what it looks like. An alcoholic's liver. Yeah, you may have. Some things are better said in, in a funny way, but this is not funny. This one is called liver abscess. This person is ready to die. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, this one was probably born by a parent who drinks heavily. So they got this in the womb. Uh, yeah. Let's go to the next. Fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, it's a brain with no exposure to alcohol. And you look at the brain that has prenatal exposure to alcohol. So alcohol also fries your brains. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to the next. Bath defects is all that. Let's go to the next. Effects of weed. Weed. The present properties like alcohol, also alcygenic. Uh, dry mouth and throat, loss of coordination, short-term memory lapses, poor judgment, altered perception of reality. You know, when we were growing up, the people who, who are trying to sell bangi to us used to tell us that when you, when you smoke bangi, you become very clever. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was a lie, because you actually have a memory lapse. THC effects, effects of mental health. Uh, so very, very serious things here. Let's go to the next. Hallucinogens, these ones are the ones that cause you to see strange things. They cause pronounced alteration of perception, a state of fantasy or illusion, a feeling of being lost in the world of dreams. Yeah, so you have drugs like ecstasy, you have other drugs. Uh, you just get one shot and you're out. And you start smiling at non-existent things. And giggling. And people can be there for hours, sometimes even days, knocked out. And just giggling around. Yeah. Right? Happy trip, all this cocaine and ecstasy. Um, let's go to the next Prescription drugs are also largely abused. These are illegally obtained over the counter at chemists and pharmacists. 
and sometimes, unfortunately, hospitals. Uh, there's psychotropic medication, there is sleep medication, there's pain medication, there's anti-allergies and antihistamines, there's cough syrups and expectorants. There's also now, unfortunately, abuse of antibiotics. So it's, it's a very unfortunate thing. Let's go to the next. Ah, this one is a tragic story. It was caused, the death was caused by alcohol and drug abuse. One of the most beautiful women ever. One of the best princesses that ever graced the world. Whitney Houston. Raised in church. Became famous. Got everything you could ever ask for in terms of money and fame. Alcohol destroyed her single-handedly. She drowned in the bathtub. Most people say she committed suicide because she had completely become hopeless. Mm. She was empty as alcohol. Okay, let's go to the next. This is Whitney, the end. Uh, please pray for people like her. Okay, let's go to the next. Unloading, flushing, sambaza, all this stuff. Go to the next. Effects of drugs. So you see, these are the IDUs, injectable drug users. This is what happens to, to them. Um, let's go to the next. That is a woman who was once beautiful. After three years and five months of drinking and taking drugs, that's what she looked like. Yeah. Body eating spirit. All right, let's go to the next. Risky behavior, drugs will trigger and excuses. Risky behavior, one in every three people under influence of alcohol has sex, neglects use of condoms, have multiple sexual partners, lower immune systems, so increases risk of infections, impairs judgment, uh, impairs treatment through use of ARVs, Drugs cause forgetfulness, so one cannot commit to taking ARVs, the sharing of needles, flushing, sex for drugs, all that. Let's go to the next. Risky behavior. Uh, this is the addiction process. Early detection of drug use can prevent full-blown drug addiction. Uh, addiction can be divided into five stages. Stage one is experimental and social, instrumental, habitual, Compulsive. Instrumental is where you can still go back. You know, you are now asking yourself whether you want to do this and what it is doing for you. If you pass that stage, it's too late for you to turn back. You know, how, is, how instrumental is drugs in my life? At that stage, you're still early. Experimental and social, those, those are usually just what I call them fads. It's like fashion. Everyone's drinking, so let me drink. Yeah, but stage three is where you make a decision. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, stage one, the motive is experimental use. Includes curiosity, risk-taking, peer pressure, thrill for adventure, thrill-seeking, rebellion. And the next one is instrument. Uh, okay, we've skipped one. Instrumental use substances purposely to manipulate emotions and behavior. The individual discovers that alcohol and other drugs can affect feelings and actions in the following ways. Suppress feelings, enhance feelings, disinhibit behavior. So they use it to numb pain. Stage three, social. I think it was the other way around. This was two, so you will correct that. Primary motivation for use is social acceptance. The individual remains functional. This level of use is rarely identified as risky by adolescents and youth adults. Uh, warning and cautions are ignored, and no one believes that negative consequences will happen to them. Number four, uh, habitual symptoms of dependence start to appear. The abuser's lifestyle becomes progressively centered around using the drug as a means of coping and recreating. The individual uses the substances to relieve their discomfort arising from non-use. Drugs become medicine for problems. 
and compulsive stage is preoccupation with drug use to the extent that getting a high or planning for it is all they do and think about. They stop working actually. This is where people lose jobs or can't hold down anything, any job. They can't hold down a marriage. They can't hold down any, they can't do anything. When people reach here, they are sick. They can't hold anything down. The occupation of drug use, to the extent that getting high or planning for it is all he does and thinks about the only relationship the addict has is with her drug of choice, his or her drug of choice. Compulsive use is totally out of control and chemicals in the drug are now running the individual's life. They become what you call a functional addict. When they wake up, they have tremors until they have taken their drug. Then now they become normal. Okay, let's go to the next, addiction treatment services from pharmacotherapy. This is what you call detox, and substitution therapies and treatment of psychiatric diseases. This is done in specialized centers like rehabs and things like those. Harm reduction strategies, we have to reduce harm by campaigning. I was part of NACADA for a long time, about six years. I was, I was part of the board, and we established NACADA as a parastato, and we did a lot of harm reduction strategies. You can look at the NACADA. Go to the NACADA website. You will you'll find this material. Abstinence-based treatment models, the 12-step program, the AA 12-step program, therapeutic community model, where people gather around AA and Narcotics Anonymous. There is also SA now, Sexaholics Anonymous. People who are addicted to sex. It's a, it's a community like that. But they only, you only find them by reference. People will ref, you, will, you get referred there. Support group system. So there's pharmacotherapy, use of medical approaches, interventions to treat drug use problems, um, and abuse, which is a drug. These are all drugs. Methadone, psychotropic medication. Methadone was under discussion for a long time. I, I attended international conferences where we were trying to make a decision together with doctors whether methadone should be used or should be legalized or not. It's a very interesting drug. It's like a, a, a substitute addiction, but with less harmful effects. But that again, you can look up on the, in the NACADA website and just in that website, Google up methadone, you'll find information. Okay. Um, Program content, individual sessions, youth and family therapy, life and social skills, psychoeducational groups, recreational and creative activities, spiritual counseling. It's not optional. I'd, I'd not put it as optional. It's actually mandatory that you must find spiritual help. Individual and group therapies, maybe psychotherapeutic, life skills, etc. Usually bringing an addict back is quite some work. One of the things we did when I was one of the directors at NACADA was, because in the initial stages when you're forming as parastato, there's a legal framework, but there's also what you call the intervention framework. And so that's where now you go and you do uh, what you call benchmarking trips. We did several benchmarking trips and the best intervention we found was in Malaysia. And in Malaysia, they have a very good model where they have um, one organization that deals with everything. That organization does harm reduction. It also does what you call um, supply suppression, which is what the police do. So it has its own police force. It has its own courts, okay? Um, then it also has its own prisons, which are corrective in nature. You know, here in Kenya, if you commit any offense, you're all lumped together. But there they have, they have their own prisons where they do what you call corrective um, intervention when a person is serving a sentence. So they are punished, yes, for their offense, but they are also rehabilitated. And when they come out, they have something we call uh, 
restorative communities. They are put, they're given a skill and they're put in a community of people who understand them. So they're not immediately reintegrated into their families. They're put into these communities. Then after a while, they begin to visit their families because sometimes they have caused so much damage to their families. So if you release a person like that from prison and tell them, Enda Nyumbani, that Nyumbani will see them and shut the door on them. That's how most of them pass away because now they become homeless. So this is very important for us to, to, to remember. Okay, let's go to the next that treatment options, counseling, establishment of support groups, addiction treatment services, preventive and arrestive interventions, be your brother's keeper, declaring your workplace drug free. Um, so these are important things to do. Life skills training, three cognitive behavioral domains, drug resistance skills and information, personal self-management, general social skills. These are all courses that are offered and one needs to, once you domesticate it in a church, you can get people from Nakada to come and help you. Okay, um, the next, protective skills, self-understanding, self-esteem, coping with emotions, coping with stress, friendship formation and maintenance, assertiveness. Incidentally, this particular presentation was prepared for me by Nakada. And I still maintain a relationship with them. So I'm only presenting it. <laughs> Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Yeah, so, I'm looking very good in front of you, but <laughs> the other people who did the brain work. Um, Self-understanding, self-esteem, coping with emotions, coping with stress, friendship formation and maintenance, assertiveness, empathy, effective communication, negotiation skills, non-violent conflict resolution, decision-making. But when you come, as I conclude, to scripture, scripture basically helps us to repent. And as we repent, God helps us by breaking the bondage. He breaks the bondage through the, he breaks the yoke and the bondage through the anointing. Praise the Lord. He breaks the yoke and the bondage through the anointing. And once he does that, then he fills our hearts. That emptiness that addiction causes can only be filled by the Holy Spirit. He fills our hearts. And then lastly, once he has done that, then he leads us on to places where we can serve. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have taught us. It's been a lot in a short time. We ask you, Father, to take residence in our hearts and take the place of lordship in our lives. Please say this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this revelation. Today, I align myself to you. I repent of my long-term ignorance of matters to do with drug and substance abuse. Today, I repent for my own abuse. Today, I take opportunity to repent for the abuse of my family. Oh Lord, would you forgive me for abusing drugs? Forgive my family. And I want you to mention names of people and intercede for them. Pray that the, all these spirits we have mentioned and all these curses we have mentioned will be broken over them.
I'd like you to take time to forgive those people in your family who have hurt you because of alcohol and drug and substance abuse. If you have been one of those who has spent your life covering shame and receiving a lot of pain in your life because of alcohol and drug and substance abuse, I want you to forgive, forgive the person. If it was your father like me, one of the things I really struggled with when I was forgiving my dad was the fact that he was, when he was drunk, he was just someone else. And he hurt us. He hurt us really deeply. And I thank God that he gave me the grace to deal with this over a long period of time. It took time. It took time. So I want you to just begin to let go of that person. Let go of the, the pain that they caused you. And they continue to cause you. Some of them are your children. They, you see them, you look at them. You have said everything you could possibly say. Perhaps today you have understood that wine is a mocker. So the, the spirits of mockery will not listen to anything. They will not listen to advice. They will not respect authority. Maybe it's your spouse, whoever they are. I want you to know that that pain is very deep. That pain hits. It, it, it hits very hard. And you cannot defend yourself from it. You can only go before God and give it to him. And perhaps for some people here, it may be that you, you already buried someone or several people out of alcohol. And people have died. And you saw the death coming. <clears throat> there are times it reaches with drug alcohol, drug, and substance abuse, when you can see this person is headed to an early grave or a premature grave because of this. And that's very hard. It's a very difficult loss. It's a very, very difficult loss. Let's continue in prayer. Please say after me, Lord, I renounce all use of alcohol. I renounce the pleasure that comes from alcohol. I renounce the slavery of alcohol. I renounce the halotry, sexual immorality, debauchery, that comes from alcohol. I renounce the destruction that comes from alcohol. I renounce the death that comes from alcohol. Today, I also renounce the deception that comes through alcohol. In the name of Jesus, I declare myself free by your grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of the blood of Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may resist the devil. Reconstruct me on the inside where I have been broken. Rebuild me. Make me whole today and always in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for these people. Bless them. Every single one of them. May your grace be upon them. May your mercy be upon them. May your touch be upon them today and always in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.